Hi everybody, welcome to our vodcast on classifying creatures and writing a dichotomous key. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how we can identify or sort or single out organisms based on characteristics that you can see on their bodies. Then we'll write a sequence of statements to show you how to sort them out and separate them out known as a dichotomous key. So why don't we get started? So writing a dichotomous key, there's some rules that you want to stick to. Uh, just writing a basic one so it makes it easy for you. First of all, you only want to use observable characteristics or things that you see. So basically what you want to do is talk about structures or body parts if we're talking about animals and so forth and because we can see these things and they're obvious. So we want to use things like wings or hair or antenna, things like that as you can see on this beautiful monarch butterfly. All right, so that's the first thing. Second of all, when you sort these creatures out, the best way to organize it is to use a series of yes or no questions about the characteristics. So you want to say, does the creature have wings? Does the creature have spots? Does the creature not have fur? So things like that. Next, when we write up a tool called a dichotomous key, which I'll explain a little bit later, we want to use a series of statements in pairs, which we call couplets. And usually one statement says the creature has a characteristic, and then the second one would have, say the creature does not have. So, for example, in, in a couplet, one could say about this monarch butterfly, when identifying the butterflies, the creature has white spots. And that would be statement A in the couplet. And then statement B in the couplet would be the creature does not have white spots. So it would be the opposite of the first statement. And then lastly, we're going to continue to do this until we identify each individual organism. So that may sound a little bit crazy. So why don't we get to it so when you see it, it makes more sense. So here we have a sorting chart and we have four organisms on it. We have a bee, we have a wasp spider, and a scorpion. So what we'll do is we will start off with a sorting question, our kickoff question. And our question is, does the creature have wings? So what we want to do next is we want to take a look at our specimens here and answer the question. We have a yes box for those that have wings and we have a no box and that's where we want to place them. So as we know, wings are structures that are found on the backs of insects and other organisms that allow them to fly. So the bee clearly has wings here. The wasp has wings. The spider does not, so we're going to place that in the no box, and the scorpion does not. And thank God these two don't have them. Now, once we get to this point or this level in the sorting chart now, we have to concentrate on the boxes. So we have to come up with another question here, but that question is going to be based on the organisms only in the yes box. So in this yes box, we're going to try to divide and separate the bee from the wasp. And we're going to ignore spider and the scorpion for now. So when you take a look at the bee and the wasp, what you'll notice is that they do have some differences. They look similar, but they are different. So most strikingly, bees are fuzzy and they have short hairs on them, which are great for carrying pollen. Since they're pollinators and they rely on nectar and flowers, whereas wasps are predators. They don't need pollen or nectar. They go and eat other insects and stuff. So their bodies don't have hair. Okay, bees' legs are wider and flat, whereas the wasp's legs are a little bit more round and cylindrical. The body, the thorax and the abdomen of the bee are a little bit more round than the cylindrical shape of the abdomen and thorax of the wasp. So we do have some differences here in physical differences, but we'll go with the easy one. So let's say, does the creature have fur or hair? All right, so once we do that, we're gonna sort them out into these boxes. So the creature that does have fur or hair would be the bee, and that's the one we're gonna drag into the yes box. And since the wasp does not have hair, we're gonna drag the wasp into the no box. So now you can see the path of their organization or sorting. The creature that does have wings and does have hair would be the bee. The creature that does have wings but does not have hair would be the wasp. And that's all you have to do. So we're gonna do the same thing with the spider and the scorpion. Now, if we take a look at the spider and the scorpion over here, you're going to see a bunch of different characteristics. Most obvious ones are in the scorpion. Like, for instance, the scorpion has a tail, whereas the spider does not. The scorpion has a stinger, where the spider may have fangs, but not a stinger. The scorpion has claws, the spider does not. So those are some examples of physical characteristics that you can see. What we're going to do is we'll use the most obvious ones, or one of the most obvious ones, is the stinger, and then use that as our question. So does the organism or does the creature have a stinger? And obviously the creature that has a stinger is a scorpion, so we'll drag that into the yes box. And the creature that does not have a stinger we, is the spider, and we drag it into the no box. So this part of the sorting chart would read, the creature that does not have wings and has a stinger is the scorpion. The creature that does not have wings 
but does not have a stinger is the spider. That's how we can use these questions to sort out these organisms into their individual species. When you do a sort, you want to stay away from characteristics such as long, because if you have objects, one object may be longer than the other, but may be shorter than the third. So length is always relative to what you're comparing it to, and same thing with size. You don't want to say bigger, because one object may be bigger than the other, but is shorter than the third object. Always go with what you see, the most obvious things, and that's the easiest way to sort this stuff out. Wings, antenna, legs, number of legs, claws, stingers, tails, things like that. If you use those, you'll never get these wrong. Why don't we take these questions and the sorting chart that we did and turn it into a dichotomous key. Now this is a dichotomous key. A dichotomous key is a tool that scientists use to identify organisms based on physical structures. And how we do it is this. A dichotomous key is composed of a series of couplets, pairs of statements, about certain structures that are found on organisms. Based on the characteristics that organisms possess, they'll provide the answers to the statements and then they'll move down. Now it sounds a little bit crazy, but once we get started and go through this, it'll make a lot more sense. So you might remember, our first question was, does the creature have wings? So we turn that into the statement that says the creature has wings and the creature does not have wings. So if you remember the four organisms we looked at, only two of them had the wings, bees and the wasps. But since we have two organisms, this statement here doesn't identify one particular organism. So we can't use this statement to say bee or wasp. So we have to go to a second couplet. So what we would do here is we would actually write, go to two. What we would do is then we would go to couplet set two, 2A two and 2B. Now, this is where we come up with our next statement or next question. Our second question was, does the creature have fur or hair? So we're going to use that fur and hair characteristic as our deciding factor because that's what decided these two here. So we would say and make the statement in 2A, the creature has fur and hair. Okay, and then the second part, the B statement of the couplet, is always going to be the opposite, saying that it does not have the characteristic that you listed before. With that being said, 2B would read the creature does not have fur or hair. At this point, we can now identify these individual organisms. The creature that has wings and has fur would be the bee. The creature that has wings but does not have fur would be the wasp, as you can see there. And that's how we use a dichotomous key. We use that series of statements based on physical characteristics to eventually identify an organism. Now let's finish up this dichotomous key. 1B says the creature does not have wings, so if you may remember, the two creatures that did not have any wings were the spider and the scorpion. So again, we have two organisms that don't have wings, so it doesn't single out a specific one. So we can't label or identify the spider or the scorpion here. So what we need to do is we have to go to another couplet. We say we'll go to couplet three. And the reason why we go to couplet three is because we've already used couplet two. So we can't go to couplet two. So we go down to couplet three. And if you may remember, our second question was, does the creature have a stinger? that's what we're going to use in couplet three. The creature has a stinger and the letter B portion of the couplet is going to be the opposite. The creature does not have a stinger. Now when we read the dichotomous key, the creature that does not have wings but has a stinger would be the scorpion. The creature that does not have wings and does not have a stinger in our group would be the spider. And that completes our dichotomous key. So remember, when organizing or sorting organisms, make sure you use observable characteristics. Write out question statements, yes or no questions, to help you sort them out. And when you write a dichotomous key, turn those questions into statements to list the series of characteristics needed to identify the specific organisms that you have. All right, hopefully that was clear. Hopefully you found that easy, and thank you so much for your time.